Hi everyone, uh, this is Sydney here with another weekly or lesson plan tech update video. Uh, for this uh, lesson or learning experience and what I really focused on this week was working with Google Forms and Google Slides. So for my farm to table project this is actually one of those beginning learning experiences where before we are actually growing crops and creating the garden from scratch we need to kind of figure out uh, that backbone of the project and that's really you know choosing the foods that we're going to grow and why so this whole learning experience that deals with Google Slides is really helping students generate that why you know why should we grow this what what benefits would growing this particular food how, what would be able to reap from this so students would be assigned this Google Slides note catcher on Google Classroom and if you're familiar with Google Classroom and how assigning uh, things works, um, I would have the opportunity to assign this slide to, I'd make a copy for each student, so that way they're working on this, it's self-paced, they can put on down, jot down their own notes and complete the activities at their own pace, and I can also click on the assignment itself and the particular student and check in with each of them and leave them little notes and feedback, so I think that that feedback piece, that feedback loop is really powerful there. Um, especially having the opportunity for the students to work at their own pace and it to be virtual so they can work on it anywhere, anytime. And, you know, they're, they're really generating, uh, essentially they'll have a, a mini virtual notebook of, you know, what types of minerals are found or, and vitamins are found in our food. So I'll quickly just kind of skip through this. Uh, the black boxes, I have text um, placeholders there. So when I assign it to the students, they'll be able to type in their name. Um, here it kind of just like explains the directions. So they'll be using various resources and uh, particularly like I use Epic often with my fourth grade students and I've used it with various other grade levels. So they'll be able to click on these links that I've uh, set up here and either read an Epic book, they'll be able to go to a website, they'll be able to go to um, some videos that I have linked on the following page. But I really did want to highlight too that at the bottom and this is actually kind of similar to Moodle and some other Google Slides activities I've put together in the past. Um, students have the opportunity to click and drag these little check marks up to the boxes. So when they are complete with the task or they finish that um, source or that resource, they, they know they're done. So it kind of keeps them accountable as well. So that is just the Epic resources. I have four books linked for them. And I have web resources. So it was really important to me that not only did I have books um, offered to them at different lexiles, but I also have you know various types of resources. So I have a couple articles and I have a couple of videos there. So again, they're keeping themselves countable by clicking and dragging those little check boxes. And then once they're done looking at all of the resources, then they can always travel back to those resources, but they'll start filling in the actual note catcher. So again, here is where they will answer my question as to you know why do we need vitamin A? What purpose does it serve us? And then over here, they'll get to practice inserting images um, from Google Slides. And actually, I've worked with my first graders on this prior to um, this project when I was teaching first grade. Google Slides has a really, really easy way to insert an image that, you know, doesn't take students to like a suspicious site or anything. You can import an image straight into Google Slides. And that's something that our students in 3, 4, 5 are taught to do at my district. So that's pretty cool. Um, all of them are pretty familiar with Google Slides, but I'm figuring if, you know, this were to happen in a different district, I could always create a quick, short tutorial video to do that. But I did want to include that, that picture element just because I wanted this to kind of be a multimedia project. I wanted to provide students with a visual, and they're also kind of learning a new tech tip or tool in that sense. So over here in the blue side is where they'll insert three images of uh, different types of food that contain vitamin A. Now, the rest of this continues very similar. We just switch up the vitamins and minerals. And then finally, they have their last stop, and that's where they'll complete a short little exit ticket. It's just another way, aside from the Google Slides, for me to quickly check in. Did they understand the material? You know, how can I help them? How can I scaffold their learning and figure out where they are? Because this is important. We need to know the why before we can actually do it and, you know, actually start growing. There's no sense in growing foods that we don't really know about. So this is just kind of getting them to understand the basics of why we eat what we eat and why we need certain things in our body. So if I click over here, and that is linked again in there. I could also link it into the Google Classroom as well. 
but again, it's just short. I like it because I've made it a quick quiz. I can see the responses and it gives immediate feedback to me and to my students. So although Google Forms and Google Slides is something that I've used before, um, I don't often get to use it in a sciencey setting uh, beforehand and I'm not sure if it'll pull it up on my computer just because I logged into my private account and my school account. But I am working on New York State history with my students. So I have a New York State history one where they will type in, they have their symbols here and they can click and drag. We've learned about the flag. So again, they'll click and drag different cities. Um, and I even have one included here. Uh, geographic features, so on, and pro even professional sports teams. So my students have really enjoyed that. I've also done it with the Westing game, the novel, um, and we've done a lot of focus on a lot of vocabulary activities. So again, it's not something that I'm like very unfamiliar with, but I constantly am learning new things with Google Slides, and it's probably one of my favorite Google tools to use. So as always, if anybody has any feedback or wants to know more, uh, feel free to let me know and I'm excited to see where everybody else is this week.